Hello everybody, it's Dr. Mike here again with another medical 3D printing tutorial. Uh, today we're going to learn how to make a 3D printable skull, including the arteries and the veins that go to the neck and the brain, utilizing free and open source software and web-based services. This tutorial is based on a workshop that I'm going to be giving at the 2017 Radiological Society of North America meeting in Chicago, Illinois. That's going to be November 28th through December 3rd, 2017. So uh, this tutorial uh, online will encompass most of the same material uh, that we'll go over in that workshop. So without further ado, uh, let's get started. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what this tutorial will encompass. Um, First of all, we'll have a session overview. We'll talk about an automated method to create a 3D printable model using a conversion service on embody.com. This is free. And uh, the second part of the tutorial, will go over a manual method where you can download and install software and, um, and uh, create the model on your own computer. Uh, both of these methods have different advantages and disadvantages. The automated method is fast and easy. It doesn't require you to really uh, know very much about um, how to use the particular software packages, but it does not provide very precise control of segmentation. So if you're already a 3D printing expert, this may not be the, the best thing for you. But if you're a beginner, this may be a great place to start. The manual method uh, involves the free and open source software programs 3D Slicer and Mesh Mixer. They allow you uh, to, uh, to precisely control what structures you want to be included in your 3D printable model. But uh, the software is somewhat complex, uh, especially 3D Slicer, and there is a learning curve associated with it. So uh, this is a, a, a summary of our workflow. We're going to take our medical scan file, turn it into a surface like this, and then do some cleanup uh, so that we can take it to a 3D printable file. Uh, in the desktop, Workflow will use 3D Slicer for the first step and Mesh Mixer for the second step, but the online workflow with Embody.com service uh, just does both of these steps automatically. Okay, now I am going to take a moment now to talk about uh, the Food and Drug Administration or the FDA and the role uh, that software plays uh, if you're going to be using the software for medical purposes. Um, now, I've received a lot of questions from, uh, from other physicians who are asking about uh, uh, what the FDA uh, requires or doesn't require in terms of using FDA-approved software for uh, medical use. And in particular, uh, this is from uh, people in the United States. This doesn't really apply to, uh, to non-US uh, practitioners. And there's been a lot of uh, uncertainty about this, and fortunately, at a meeting uh, on August 31st, 2017, the FDA helped to clarify this, um, and uh, you can actually find this slide deck at this link uh, over here. And I'll put a link uh, in the description to help you uh, to help you find that. Uh, here's the relevant slide, and basically the question is: Does a doctor need to use only FDA-approved software, which is usually expensive and very proprietary? to do medical 3D printing. And the FDA stance on this as of uh, August 31st, 2017 is no, the uh, doctor, uh, when the doctor makes a, a 3D printable model for diagnostic use, uh, that's considered part of the practice of medicine and the FDA does not re regulate the practice of medicine. So uh, a doctor is not obligated to exclusively use expensive proprietary software for medically related 3D printing. Now, if you are a corporation or uh, uh, some other kind of commercial entity and you are actively marketing the software for medical 3D, for diagnostic related medical 3D printing, then yes, you do have to um, seek FDA approval. And of course, if you could be anybody and if you're not using the software uh, to create um, or uh, to make medical models for diagnostic use, that's the key term here, then uh, you can use whatever you want. Okay, so this uh, this really helps to clarify um, 
about whether you are allowed to use FDA approved software in the United States for diagnostic use. Uh, basically, if you're a physician and you think that it's the right thing to do for a patient, you're, uh, you should be okay. So I encourage everybody to go to this link. And if you're interested in this topic, you can download the slide deck and, uh, and analyze it yourself. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're going to do here is uh, get our CT scan for this tutorial. Um, there's a link to the scan uh, in the description. So go ahead and uh, look in the description and this will take you to this page where you can download the CT scan. So this is free to download. You do have to register for a free account, but you can go ahead and download it. Um, so here is the scan. So you go ahead and click the download button and you should have a file in your downloads um, folder called CTA headneck.nrrd. NRRD is the file format that, um, that is used to anonymously transfer medical scans. If you're interested in learning more about how to convert a DICOM study to a NRD file, uh, I'll put a link to it in the description to a tutorial that I made on, on just how to do that. It's not very difficult. It takes about a minute to do that conversion. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is open Slicer. Now, if you don't have uh, Slicer, uh, you go ahead and go to slicer.org and click the download button and you can choose your operating system and you can download the latest version of Slicer. This is a free open source software package uh, for Windows, uh, Mac, and uh, uh, Linux. So I'm going to go ahead and open Slicer. And once it opens, I'm going to drag and drop the CTA head file onto the Slicer window like this. Click OK and you can inspect your your CT scan. So the left mouse button controls window level, the right, right mouse button controls zoom, and the scroll wheel uh, will allow you to scroll back and forth. You can also scroll using these handles over here. So this is a contrast enhanced CT scan of the head and neck. And that's what we're going to be working with. Okay. Now the first part is, the first part of this tutorial is going over the automated online service. So what you can do is go to embody.com at embodi3d.com and you need to register for an account if you don't have one uh, log in and click on the uh, uh, this democratized button. Uh, and click Launch App. Democratized is the free online conversion service that basically allows you to automatically take this CT scan and convert it into a 3D printable model that's pretty much error-free. Very simple and easy to use. Uh, it's batchable, so you can upload multiple files at the same time and, and then it'll automatically convert uh, all of them simultaneously. So I'm going to drag and drop this onto that field and while it's uploading I'm going to go ahead and enter in some basic information here. So uh, for the file name, I'm going to say CT angiogram head for tutorial, YouTube for video tutorial. And you have to put something in the description. I'll say that as well. Uh, you can enter some tags if you want. Uh, and then you can set the um, privacy of this file that you're uploading. You can share this file if you want, or you can make it private. In this case, I'm going to keep it shared so that other people can use it. And uh, set your license type. Okay. Uh, and now the second part right over here, this democratized processing, this is where we are going to tell the system what we want it to do with this scan. And uh, this is a CT scan in an NRD format, and I can choose to turn it into a bone model, a detailed bone model in the STL file format, a muscle model, or a skin model. I'm going to leave it at the default setting of bone. Uh, I can set the quality to whatever I like. For today's purposes, I'm going to leave it as medium. Leave the threshold 
Uh, and then I'm going to set what kind of uh, uh, parameters I want on the output model, whether I, I can keep that private or I can share it with the community. Um, and I can make that model free uh, for download, or I can try and sell it if, I, if I'm interested in doing that. And you can set a price for what you want to sell it at. I'm going to make that free. Choose a license with which uh, you want to share that model. In case the model that's going to be created is your intellectual property, you own it. And then leave that category there and click Save and Submit. Okay. And what will happen is your file will be automatically processed. And in about maybe between 5 and 20 minutes, depending on the quality and the size of the file and how busy the servers are, you should get an email saying that your uh, file is done and ready for download. Now, um, I've already gone through the liberty of, of uh, taking this very same file and creating the model using the service ahead of time. So here is the model, and this is what you get after about you know, this top probably took about 10 minutes or so. Uh, and, you know, you can upload multiple files and convert multiple models simultaneously. Uh, and that really allows you to do a lot of conversions quickly if you have a lot of work to do. And you can kind of take a look at the snapshots or the thumbnails. And it's a pretty decent, pretty decent model. And um, if you're happy with that, you can go ahead and download it. I have to agree to the download terms, and your model will go ahead and download. So that's uh, that's how the online conversion service service works. If you're not familiar with Embody.com or their free services, uh, I would highly recommend that you investigate it. Uh, in addition to uh, this model conversion service, Embody.com has a very large library of uh, free files that you can you know you can browse and download uh, so there are actually uh, hundreds or in, you know probably thousands of files that are available uh, for you to use uh, they also have forums that are quite nice so if you have any questions you can go ahead and ask questions about medical 3d printing in these forums and the community is usually quite willing to help you okay so this is uh, this is how to automatically convert your uh, your CT scan to a 3D printable bone model using the free online service at embody.com. So at this point, uh, we're going to go ahead and get to the second part of our uh, tutorial, which is how to use desktop software, uh, free and open source desktop software to, to do the same thing. All right. Now, the desktop workflow is a little bit more complicated and a little harder to learn, but once you learn it, you'll have much more control over uh, how you want your models to, uh, you know, to turn out. So the first thing we're going to do is, um, if you haven't already, open Slicer. And of course, we already, we had already opened Slicer. So I'm going to go ahead and close it out and reopen it. And I'll take this file, ctahead.nrrd. Uh, that file is uh, the file that goes along with this tutorial. If you don't have that file, go ahead and uh, I'll click. I'll make a link in the description. Click on that link. Uh, you have to register for an account and then download the file so that you can follow along. I, I highly recommend that you follow along because that's the best way for you to learn. And uh, the registration is quick and easy. So. All right, so here's the here's our file. Uh, we can scroll using these these bars again. Middle mouse button scrolls, left mouse button window levels, and right mouse button zooms. So we're going to th this is a volumetric data set. A CT scan is made up of uh, little cubes. They're like a picture has pixels. Well, a, a volumetric data set has voxels, which are essentially volumetric pixels. They're like uh, little cubes. And we need to convert that into a surface model. Uh, 
So the way that we're going to do that is use uh, one of the many modules that Slicer has. I'm going to go ahead and blow this up called Grayscale Model Maker. So if you click on this menu that says Welcome to Slicer and click on All Modules, this will give you a list of all the different modules within Slicer. And you can see that there are quite a few, which is one of the reasons why Slicer is kind of complicated to learn. Uh, but the one we want is called Grayscale Model Maker, right here. Grayscale Model Maker. Each one of these modules has a specialized function that allows you to do something. So uh, Slicer is quite powerful, but um, you know I've been using it for years, and, and even I don't know what all of these modules do. So let's click on Grayscale Model Maker. Now, uh, so you see this panel open up on the left-hand side, and this is where we're going to enter in the information that will allow us to um, uh, convert this to a surface model. So the parameter, we're going to leave this as Grayscale Model Maker. It says select a volume. This is the input volume, and that's going to be our CTA head right there. Output geometry, uh, we don't have any output geometry, so we've got to create a new one. We want to create a new model, and that's the name of it. For threshold, we're going to make that 150. This is in a unit called Hounsfield units, which is, uh, if you're in medical imaging, it's, it's a way in which the colors of a CT scan are, are um, represented. For decimate, we're going to say 0 0.8, okay? This is going to reduce the polygon count of our output model by 80%. We're still going to have uh, something like 600,000 polygons, so there's going to be plenty of detail, but if you leave it at 0.25, you're going to have millions of polygons, and it's probably going to crash your computer. So um, go ahead and set that to 0.8, and then uncheck this split normals. Okay? So double check that everything is, is set. A threshold of 150. We have a new model and the name is named model. 0.8 for decimate and split normals is unchecked. Go ahead and click apply. And now what will happen is uh, the grayscale model maker will go ahead and it's calculating uh, where the surface of your model is going to be uh, and extracting that information from the CT scan. All right. So that'll run for about, uh, you know, less than a minute probably. And now it says the status is completed. So we have actually generated our model. Uh, it's not actually being shown to us, um, but it should be there. So we're going to save that model now to our disk and uh, do the subsequent steps uh, with a different program called Mesh Mixer. So go ahead and click on the Save button. And it's going to ask you to save the scene. And what we, th what we, this was called Output Geometry. Our model is called Output Geometry. So here it is right here. And we're going to make that, first of all, uncheck everything except the Output Geometry. And the file format is currently in the VTK file format. So we're going to change that to STL, which is the common file format for 3D printable models. And then I'm going to change the directory. I want to save it. I'm going to save it in the same folder as the downloads folder where everything else is. So I'm going to save it in the downloads folder and click save. Now, if everything worked out well, I should have a file called outputgeometry.stl in my downloads folder. So let's go ahead and have a look. And here it is. So this is it, outputgeometry.stl. So now I'm going to go ahead and open Mesh Mixer. If you don't have Mesh Mixer, uh, you can go to meshmixer.com, which is here, and download it. Here it is, meshmixer.com. Click the download button and choose your operating system. So Mesh Mixer is a fantastic uh, 3D printing um, uh, software package that's, uh, that's published by Autodesk. So uh, they, they make uh, um, some uh, very powerful CAD software, and they relief, release Mesh Mixer for free. So it's uh, free to use. So take the file output geometry and drag and drop it onto the Mesh Mixer window, and our model will open up. Okay, 
<coughs> excuse me. So here's the model, and you can see that it's very faceted. You know, you can see it looks like there's these sharp faces, and it's not very smooth. Uh, there are these little bits of stuff floating around over here. So this is not something that can be 3D printed. Also, there's holes in the bottom of the model where the scan uh, ended, and there's a hole in the top. So all of this needs to be repaired. I'm going to go ahead and open up the screen here. Now, MeshMixer has uh, some very powerful automated error correction tools. And uh, one of them is called Inspector. So we're going to run this tool, the Inspector tool, go to Analysis. Right here is this Analysis button, and then go up here and click on Inspector. And what is happening is MeshMixer is showing us all of the errors in this model. And there are something like a thousand of them. And there are different kinds. There are these blue ones and pink ones and red ones. And they all represent different kinds of problems. And we're just going to click on the Auto Repair All button. And MeshMixer will now automatically go through and attempt to fix all of these problems. And depending on how many you have and uh, you know some technical dis uh, uh, issues, you may or may not be able to fix them all. And in this case, there's one at the bottom that we can't fix automatically. So MeshMixer got all the other ones, just that one is still left, which is okay uh, because we're going to fix that a little later on in the tutorial. All right, so we're going to click Done. Now, you, st you see we still have this issue of the uh, faceted kind of appearance, and we can fix that by doing a remesh operation, which is an operation that goes ahead and it, what it does is it takes all of these polygons and it try and, uh, tries to reassign them, resize them so that they more appropriately cover this surface and it looks like a, a smoother and more natural appearance. So I'm going to go ahead and click this select button over here and this will give me a, a paintbrush and you can adjust the size of the paintbrush using this uh, size slider. And I'm going to just left click somewhere and what this is going to do is it's going to highlight some of these polygons okay so they're highlighted when they're highlighted they're in orange and I'm going to check my remesh settings so you can hit hit the R key so the R key in your keyboard or you can go to edit and remesh but you have to have some orange highlighted um, polygons in order to do that and what this will do is it will bring up the control panel that will allow you to set the parameters on the remesh. And you can see that there's this choice between relative density, adaptive density, linear subdivision. Choose adaptive density. Okay, make sure that says adaptive density. And you can see that already some of these polygons have been remeshed and they're much more ordered than the polygons around there. I don't know if you can see that. but the orange ones seem to be a lot smoother, all this, all about the same size. So now our remesh is pretty much set up. We're going to select all of these polygons, and we have, what, 534,000 triangles. So when we do that, it's going to take a little bit of time. So it's going to be, take about a minute and a half to process, and that's why I wanted to get the settings all set up before we go ahead and do that. Okay, so go ahead and click Accept. Now what we're going to do is expand our selection so that we select the whole model. And the way to do that is to hit Control A. So the Control A will, will highlight every polygon in the model, or you can um, go to Modify Select All. Okay, Click this, or you can hit Control A. And what will happen is your entire model will now be selected. So when it's selected, it turns orange. You can see that all 534,000 polygons have been selected. Now we're going to run that remesh operation again. So go to edit and hit remesh or hit the R key. And what will happen is the remesh will work for, uh, for about a minute and a half. Okay. Okay, everybody, I'm back. I cut the video because I didn't want you to have to wait a minute and a half or so for this to complete. 
but uh, you can see that the remesh has completed and now the surface looks a lot more regular. You don't see that jagged sort of faceted appearance. Uh, everything looks pretty good. So the remesh is done. Let's go ahead and click accept. And that will make the changes permanent. Okay, so now our model is uh, looking much better. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and fix this hole on the bottom that we still have. So we're going to go back to Analysis and click on the Inspector tool. Now, because we have, uh, oh, he hit Auto Repair All. So because we've actually changed and redone all the polygons, now any of these uh, residual errors can usually be automatically fixed, as was the case here. So let's click on the Done button. Okay, so everything's looking good. What I would like to do here is I would like to literally chop off the top of the skull so that we can see in and see the arteries and the veins inside the skull. So the way I'm going to do that is, first of all, I'm going to select everything again by hitting Control A. And I'm going to use a tool called Plane Cut, which is here. It's under Edit. So go to Edit, Plane Cut. And what this does is it's a tool that ha there's a plane and one side of the plane is going to be literally cut off and the other side of the plane is going to remain. So here are the, uh, here are the controls for this plane. You can use the arrow. So I'm going to use this purple arrow to drag it up. Now, right now, if I do the plane cut, the top part of the skull will be left and the bottom part will be deleted. And I want the opposite. I want the bottom part to be left and the top part to be deleted. So I'm going to rotate the plane 180 degrees using this green uh, handle. And you can choose the, the, there are some markers over here. And if you put the mouse over the markers, that will help you to, uh, help you to, uh, go at the specific angles, or if you move them away, you can kind of freehand it a little bit. But if you go right over the markers, I want it to be flipped 180 degrees, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, and now I should have the top of my skull opened up for me. So when you're happy with how things look, click on the Accept button, and there we go. So now my skull is looking pretty good. So uh, if I want to export the final STL file, <clears throat> I go to File and Export. Uh, it's going to go, I'm going to call this uh, Mesh Mixer Final Model, and I'm going to click Save. So now the model is done. It's in the STL file format, and it's ready to be sent to a 3D printer. Okay, so that's about it for the tutorial. I hope you found that helpful. In this tutorial, we learned two ways to uh, convert a medical CT scan into a 3D printable model. Uh, first, using the free service on uh, embody.com, which will allow us to convert a medical CT scan into a model automatically. And the second, using a more manual method uh, and desktop software using Slicer and uh, Mesh Mixer. So if you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and, um, and hit the like button. Please consider subscribing. If you're interested in uh, learning more about this, there is a link in the description to the full written tutorials. You can also follow along in a written format if you like. And thank you very much. Happy 3D printing.